I've been involved in chemical damp coursing for 40 years since I was a boy leaving school working for the damp proofing firm my dad ran. And in those days we used to inject chemicals into walls under pressure, uh, high pressure actually, and these chemicals were solvent based um, silicones and basically it wasn't a very nice job. We'd drill the holes into the brickwork, or the, usually the brickwork in them days, inject the material, it stank, it was inflammable. Um, because it was spirit based and there was obviously we're injecting it into a damp wall, um, there was a thing we used to call viscous fingering, um, which is basically where the material, the two dissimilar materials with different viscosities, rather than mixing evenly, what happens is um, the material will stretch through the material the easiest path and avoid other areas and you end up with voids. So it wasn't particularly effective either. It was partly dealt with by switching to water-based materials, the siliconates, and they used to be placed into a water-based material, but we were still injecting them under pressure, although lower pressure. You get to the 90s and by then these issues had been identified and the manufacturers then and the BRE and the British Wood Preserving Association, it's now the PCA back in the day, decided quite rightly that the process should be done in the bed joints rather than the bricks because the bed joints give continuity. They are full of capillaries and pores uh, so they, most of the rising damp actually rises through bed joints. That's been well known now for the past 30 years. Um, and bricks are much denser of course and the thing is that um, you can inject the brick as much as you like but the bed joint gives a bridge around it for damp to rise up and that's what tends to occur. So injecting into the bed joints um, became the norm. Um, we still had the issue though that basically you're using a pump to inject a liquid um, and for instance if there are cracks or crevices or voids, tiny voids in the material, they'll fill with that liquid and you'll lose some of it. Um, it may leak into the cavity or away somewhere and not do its job. Now this has been uh, identified and then cured uh, in the 90s by the introduction of cream materials um, and we have a relationship with our suppliers going back to the 1980s actually with Safeguard Europe who are a company I admire a lot and I've dealt with them a lot and they produced a product, a wonderful material called Dryzone and Dryzone is um, it's basically a, a siloxane water repellent but it's within um, a quite viscous material, a, a, a sort of cream, it almost looks like mayonnaise if you were to take this lid off it's like a, a mayonnaise material and it's thixotropic which means that it doesn't run of it under gravity of its own accord, but you can pump it. And so what we can do now is we can drill into the bed joints at the base of a damp wall and we can inject this cream um, and we're not injecting it under pressure, we're just simply caulking the hole, if you like, with the material. And then what will happen is it will diffuse into the bed joints locally and into the unit, masonry units as well. And so in effect it's been drawn into the sections of wall where it's most needed. Um, it's solvent free and so we end up in a situation where the chemicals are now friendlier, they're not being injected under high pressure and there are quality control benefits as well because um, it's so quick and easy for an operator. It's expensive as a material but it saves on labour. So actually although it's much more expensive as a material than injecting water-based siliconate, we save time. And it's less onerous for the operator, he's not mixing chemicals on site, he's not struggling around with big drums of, of, of chemicals and we haven't got all that material to dispose of. So environmentally it's a better way of approaching a job. Um, I like it as well because when you've caulked the hole, you're left with the empty cartridge after you've finished that section of wall and you know that the product's in there, whereas with injection it may have escaped and gone its own route. So diffusion systems took over very quickly. Um, there are lots of wannabe copies of the um, dry zone system around, we don't use them, we, found, uh, we have seen evidence that some of them have lower um, active ingredients and we'd rather stick with what we know because after all we need to be certain that what we recommend to you, our client, is going to work. We have moved on a little bit further and Safeguard did more research and they came up with another system which has even further advantages than dry zone um, and this is the uh, damp rod and damp check rods which we use too. Now again a little bit more expense involved because each rod within a sachet, I'm not going to open this because once we break its seal um, its goodness will begin to uh, really leak out, uh, but basically what we've got in here is some solid rods, individual rods, 12 of them, and we can drill a hole now in the base of the wall to form 
a DPC at the correct level and then insert each individual rod. When we do that, you end up with the same sort of system. It, it will diffuse into the bed of its own accord. So it's removing that um, last connection of having to caulk the hole. We know how many holes we've drilled, we know how many rods we've put in. Each rod is charged at the factory by, with the right amount of active ingredient. So those decisions have been removed from site. There's no mixing or anything like that. So from the point of view of quality control, the client can see there's a rod in each hole. If there's a rod in the hole, then the system's going to work. It's as simple as that. So the quality control of these new rod systems is superb. In saying that, there's good reason for us still to use dry zone. Because in the vast majority of cases, applied properly with trained and experienced technicians like ours, dry zone is adequate and will do the job properly. So we're not going to recommend uh, rods in cases, for instance, where we're dealing perhaps with a nine inch wall. That's the most simple wall to deal with, a nine inch brick wall. Um, why not just use this if it's going to work? It's cheaper. However, where there's existing DPCs in, or if there's evidence, for instance, of a previous failure, you know, because it's not uncommon to come onto a survey and find that somebody else has put a damp course in before. We've still got a rising damp profile, we've checked everything, there's no plumbing leaks, there's no high path levels, no internal bridging of a cavity, and we're left with the conclusion that, well, you know, we've still got rising damp. Well, why? There's a chemical damp course in. Um, well, there are loads of reasons, especially with the older chemical injection and high pressure injection systems. They were in the brick, as I said, which isn't the best place to put them. But in addition to that, we weren't watching the operator. And there were certain things he had to be really diligent about, like the pressure setting, being patient enough to wait for that brick and bed joint to become saturated. And speaking as an operator, bear in mind I was on tools 40 years ago. It's boring, you know, sat there with your pump humming away, waiting for the wall to fill, uh, for the pores and for that damp uh, area to expand that shows that your material's soaked in. So he may have skimped on that. He might not have drilled the holes deep enough. Um, they could be too far apart. There are so many things that are uncertain. It may be one of those walls which is difficult to treat. And this is another true thing about the industry. We all know as experienced technicians and experienced surveyors that some walls take a chemical DPC less effectively than others. And it's not always apparent why that is. It'll be a mixture of things. So in those cases, if we've got a damp course in already, we will always refer to this system. Because this system, um, because it's basically uh, not water-based, there's no water content in these rods, it's not repelled by any residual chemical in the wall. So if there has been some of this viscous fingering I talked about earlier, and little voids which um, have not been treated correctly, if we use dry zone, then the water in that will actually impede the active ingredients from reaching those voids. Whereas if we use damp check rods or dry rods, we haven't got any water. So we'll get penetration and it'll affect the areas that were missed before. So that's the advantage. So this is why sometimes in our reports you'll see a chemical DPC dry zone and on other occasions the chemical DPC will be damp check rod or dry rod. I hope this has helped take some of the myths out of damp proofing and why it changes and also explained why we get failures going back years on older damp courses. These days it's state of the art, it's a completely new scene. There's no comparison between these modern systems and the high pressure and medium pressure chemical injection systems installed back in the 80s, 90s and noughties. And this is why we stick with these systems for your benefit so that the wall dries out.